properly. If they don't, asbestos will be released during the demolition and become airborne. Anyone inhaling it would risk long-term lung damage. It's just one more hazard for Kevin Klass to talk through with the Frontier's neighbors. How have you been, sir? I've been doing well. Depends on how this meeting goes. With the Trump and Wynn hotels and the fashion show shopping mall sitting uncomfortably close to the blast zone, dust and debris are major concerns. Those are the big issues for me. It's just structural, just vibration as far as what it's going to do to potentially damaging tenants, uh, merchandise, a dust cloud hangs over the discussions. A, how much dust, then B, how long does it take to settle? Massive intake fans for the air conditioning units line the roofs of each building. If the demolition dust was sucked in, the ventilation system could be damaged and dust spewed throughout the complex. To prevent that, on implosion night, air intakes will be shut down and fans wrapped in protective fabric. But wind is still a concern. Too little can be as dangerous as too much. When CDI blew up the Stardust Hotel in 2007, it created the worst dust the team had ever seen. The culprit was a freak weather condition where relative humidity had fallen to just 2.5%. With no moisture in the air to help settle the dust, a huge cloud hung in the air for 45 minutes. So the neighbors have every reason to worry. That was cool. That was cool. CDI has had to pay an $80,000 damage deposit to make sure any dust is cleaned up. You know, everybody wants a piece of something. There are also concerns about the dynamite. With the Frontier needing 5,000 sticks of explosives to bring it down, the Las Vegas Fire Department wants to know it'll be stored securely. With less than 24 hours till the explosives arrive, super tough, lockable steel containers are being installed in the most secure place on site. The hotel swimming pool. An open pit, reinforced with concrete, is the best place to contain any accidental detonation. This is what an uncontained 500 kilogram explosion can do. So proper storage is critical. But the pool is hemmed in by a drop on one side and the frontier's asbestos contaminated wings. The team must punch through one of the wings to transport the massive steel containers to the pool. The sun is already beginning to set as the excavator begins to tear down the wing. They'll need to work through the night to get the steel containers in the pool before the explosives arrive in less than 12 hours. A few hours before daybreak, the excavator finally breaks through. It levels the pool with earth, and the steel containers are lowered into the bottom. As the sun rises, they're now ready for the delivery of the dynamite. The pool has been successfully transformed into an explosive silo. Yeah, last 
But in the hotel, there's a major problem. With just five days before demolition, the reinforcing bar is still slowing the drilling team down. And if things don't improve, they'll have a pool full of explosives and nowhere to put them. The demolition plan for the Frontier Casino Hotel has run into a major problem. Dynamite needs to be placed in specially drilled holes in the walls, but massive steel reinforcement, called rebar, is chewing up the drill bits. What happened is, is I drilled into the rebar, I drilled through the rebar, and after I got past the rebar, the drill bit now has a lot of drill fines and some drill steel behind it, and it won't pull out now. Um, they're loose, as you can see, but they're stuck in the rebar. We literally have four and five layers of rebar on the end of the concrete columns, which is, as far as I'm concerned, is unheard of. The extra rebar causes two major problems. Firstly, the holes take longer to drill. Secondly, it makes the walls stronger than the team initially thought, requiring more explosives and more holes. It costs time the team just does not have. In the world's gambling capital, they're hoping their luck changes. And what do you think we should try and get accomplished today? Cut cord. Stacy Loiseau and her sister Devon have just arrived in Vegas. They handle the explosives and are expected to begin loading right away. Found the beach ball and the thing. It's going to just sweep, you know? Is it, is it sweaty already? Judge brand new Pro Max. Let's look at it. It's uh, 19,600 feet per second. What? Yeah. 19,000? Yeah. At 5,800 meters per second, the dynamite is extremely high velocity and contains a high percentage of nitroglycerin. The sticks of dynamite are sweating from the heat, leaking noxious chemicals. But that's not all the team has to deal with. A tour of the site confirms the size of the task ahead. They're getting their first look at the frontier preparation work. They're not impressed. Yeah, this is ugly. Yes. And things are about to get worse. Not a lot of work to do yet. A lot of work. See those funky legs I had to leave? Yeah. There's a massive reinforcing in those little areas. And it's not on this side, it's just on that side. So I left it. I hate these buildings. See, look at this. Some of them aren't even attached to the floor. That's monster bar in there. But it, there's your splice, and then this one, it comes down, doesn't go into the floor. It just stops. It's dangling. Well, it... I didn't know what to do, so I left it. Okay. Kev? Yes. Why aren't these cut out? I mean, was, was there yeah, some... I didn't want them cut out. He wants it... Well, he doesn't want to compromise the fence. I understand right. that. I mean, look, I'm, I can't get... There's no way to get, yeah, you're no way to, get to that. Some of, them. some of them you're going to have to cut. Another team has already installed chain link fencing to contain the flying debris. But it's covering most of the holes. Stacy and Devon can't load. Yet another team must cut openings to allow them to place the explosives. More than 5,000 holes. In the meantime, one more team unloads their explosive devices. But unlike the demolition crew, this team don't want to contain their explosions. They want maximum impact. These are the pyrotechnicians. They'll be loading the building with over a ton of fireworks, sending the frontier off Vegas style ahead of the final countdown. We've done fireworks all over the world, but to do an implosion, to see at the end of that, when this building comes down, it's just something that you don't see every day. It's pretty impressive. As the demolition team prepares to load, the pyrotechnicians fan out through the building. 
But dynamite and fireworks could prove to be a dangerous mix. When we're walking on the same floors that the dynamite is on, that gets a little unnerving. You know, when CDI comes up to us and says, don't step on that, because if you step on it, you could take out the whole building. That just, you know, adds a little bit extra. Normally, fireworks are triggered from close range, but the demolition climax requires a different approach. So they're going to use expensive, remote-controlled electronics to detonate the fireworks. But with the building being demolished, they need to make sure the electronics don't go with it. We have over $12,000 worth of these devices on the building. We need these close to the building so we could have the fireworks show that we plan on putting on tonight. But the problem is, because this is an implosion, once the building comes down, they'll be buried in the rubble and be destroyed. To protect the modules, they'll be contained in canisters. Once the demolition begins, the canisters will be ejected from the building like escape pods. As soon as our fireworks show is over, the first charge that CDI is going to fire will be at cable cutters that will cut the cable and our firing cables that are coming from the barrel and leading to the fireworks. This barrel will now slide down the cable out of harm's way. At least, that's the plan. Down by the pool, the family's preparing the explosives, inserting detonating cord into over 5,000 sticks of dynamite. In the trade, they're known as pigtails. Yeah, we're tying knots in cord. No, Kev Kevin and I agree with him. But, I mean, our flight was delayed by the time we got here. Trying to load today would sort of be fruitless. We're gonna make as many pigtails as we can. The detonating cord delivers the spark a small explosion to set off the dynamite. This is what one stick can do. The team completes the dynamite prep. But will the building be ready to load when they return in the morning? Mark's having doubts. The sheer amount of steel rebar in the building remains a serious concern. His plan requires the complete failure of the ground floor walls. But the density of reinforcing bar makes this increasingly unlikely. We've had problems drilling reinforced CMU before because it's, it's, it's concrete masonry units, concrete blocks, and they put rebar in it. But apparently the rebar they put here was much larger. Explosions will start at the north end, shattering the reinforced walls and sending them tumbling like dominoes. But if Mark can't conquer the reinforcing bar and cause the walls to fail completely, the building could remain upright, resulting in what's known as a sit-down. Sit-downs have happened before. In 2006, a different demolition company tried to implode a tower block in Pittsburgh. A portion of the building didn't fall, requiring a second set of blasts to finish the job. To ensure that doesn't happen to the frontier, Mark will use an old trick borrowed from the logging industry. We've got to get it moving. I've got to create a notch here, just like you would notch a tree. And you can see the development of this notch back here a little bit. All of this has to go away in the blink of an eye. In order for the revised plan to work, Mark needs to lay more dynamite. This means drilling more holes. And that's taking a long time. Craig Keyes is still drilling. Usually he will drill something in the order of 100 to 130 holes a day. Yesterday, in four hours, he got four. And I think that probably says it all. With Craig being delayed by the sheer mass of rebar, 